have we decided that we're gonna wear one headphones? Oh, I can. One. I don't care. No, no. You, if you want to wear them, wear them. I just it's, have no clue. It's just if you're not gonna, you're, okay. you're not gonna miss anything. No, no. I'm just saying how uh, my volume. If you stay at that level and not screaming like you did a minute ago, yeah, it feels pretty good. I might get excited, Bobby. Like a minute ago, it sounded like you're doing like screamo podcast. Yeah, cheeky cheeky chow chow. See, that's not bad. That's that good. bad. We're good. My yeah. bad. The other one though. We were, yeah. If it, gets, if it gets out of control, we'll escort you out. With, Chilling. With our, with our phone is serious. <laughs> yeah, our read. Yeah, I use that. It's like a Bob Barker. You know who that is? Yes. Well, I don't know. You're younger than I am. Yeah, dude. I know Bob. BB. But he would do the thin mark, the thin would, microphone yeah. on the price. It was even thinner though. It, it like, is. Oh yeah, for sure. It was like a sure. super thin with that. It is kind of Bob Barker. It's very, uh, yeah. R.I.P. What man. was the show? What was that show that he died? Drew Bob Barker. Yeah, did. yeah. Did he recently? Wow, but last year. I'm sure we talked about it. I just don't remember who dies and who doesn't and die he anymore. He died in '99. <sighs> Tell me. Talk. You're out of your mind. In '99. Uh, year. He was 99 years old. Oh, Got it. Like... Dang. Uh, Betty White. Dead. See. You. See you. Like it makes Bobby, sense. Bobby, where you been, bro? I no no no. I've been everywhere. That's why. Oh yeah. It's not that I've been nowhere. It's that there's just so much stimuli all the time Agreed. that I don't. I feel that. That it's hard for me to no, I feel that. sit with stuff and go, oh, yeah. yeah. Who else has died recently? She was also 99. Has anyone hit 100 that we care about? No, nah, they get close and then. Uh, Betty White was like 10 days away from her. Yeah, Betty White was real close. Yeah. Who is that? Whose wife is that? Man, oh, your manager. Oh. manager. I was like, I have no clue. Betty White's no, no, husband. No, no, I was no. like, I have no, I have no idea. I, 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 one oh, of you guys, I heard you say that's your wife and manager, but you said manager and wife. Yeah. And I met her, Jordan. I met her over there. Yeah, and two O's, Jordan. Jordan. Oh, do people call you Jordan too? Because it's spelled like that. I call her Big Don. <laughs> yeah. The Don. Uh, Teflon Don. What are you? Uh, oh, I got a bunch of stuff to talk about. I want to talk about the podcast. I want to talk about the music that eventually led to the podcast, but. What was the story you were going to tell me before we started? And I was like, well, hold off a second. If it's good. Because you told me like five bad stories in a row. And if I was like, it's one of those, just keep going. But it was, you were like, no, this one's good for a change. I didn't say it was necessarily yeah. that go ahead. good. No, go ahead. Just, it's not good. Pressure. Hey, everybody, get ready. It's All the right. best story we heard. <laughs> great no, story. Let's go. Get ready was, for a great story. Sh- All I was asking about was, I was going to ask you if you knew about Wilson, Arkansas. Do you know what that is? Where? Just above Memphis, probably 45 minutes on the, on the far side. No. I live in from Arkansas, play ball in Arkansas. But I guess we didn't go. Jonesboro is about furthest right we went. This so. is like Duck World. Like it's on the Mississippi River yeah. right there. We were just there a couple of weeks ago. And it's the it's the craziest. Duck hunting? Yeah. Correct. On somebody's lease? Yeah. Well, somebody's property? Yeah. So we were going up through there, and all of a sudden, this little town pops out of nowhere. I mean, literally, it's like highway for a long time. Nothing. Town pops up. Like super nice, the nicest little spot you'll ever like. See. High yeah. school. Then there was like this random, mega nice gym in the middle of a field with nowhere to, no, not even a parking lot. So all the duck hunting money is there. Well, turns out oh, yeah. it's one guy owns the whole town. Is that right? Yeah. And he's I, like, is his name Wilson? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think his last name is. <laughs> no way. I no way. So. That'd be hilarious. I don't think it is. Maybe I just made that up. Anyway, head. our brother-in-law, or we have another brother-in-law, just texted us and was like, "Dude." Found out the scoop on Wilson, Arkansas. It's one guy. He's like some bazillionaire. Lives in Nashville. Just owns Oh, town. lives in Nashville, too. There's like, a, do you know what a Michelin restaurant is? I do, yeah. I didn't. Well, and did you know that the actual tire company is is what the, see, is, is I, still I what that all, is? I learned all that when yeah. I went to this Wilson Cafe in Wilson. It's a, they, have a, they have a Michelin star. Five star. Bro, five. It's like, no way. There's no way. Somebody check it. Check, fact, Jumps, check it. it. There's no way Wilson, Arkansas has a five. I don't think anybody in Arkansas Arkansas's wait. five star. Unless somebody was lying. They yeah. said it was the nicest. It My, was nicer than the, any restaurant I'm in Tennessee. Looking it well, up right yeah, now. Okay, they, well, that could be a two star Michelin. I, I mean, that so the Michelin stuff. I'm pretty sure they said five. Like, I go to places in Vegas that were way Bro. expensive, way good, and they'd be like, this don't is a it. two and a half star. No, no, no. I'm just saying, if they, if they got us. I mean, like, I was, I, we went to that place thinking, like, and we were in sweatpants. Yeah, I was in sweatpants and, and mud yeah. boots. Because we didn't know. I mean, you're going to duck, duck camp. You don't think yeah. you're going to some five-star Michelin? I don't think you did, though. Okay, we're, we're we got lied to. What's it called? Do you know what it's called? Wilson Cafe. There's no way. There's no way. Because to have a, a it five. It does come up when you Google Wilson Cafe Michelin. Okay, but to have a five-star, or even to get one star, two star, three star, you have to have, like, a Michelin chef. Who's gonna, what Michelin chef's going to live in Wilson? Bro. I think it's just Wilson. a Mitchell star. I think it's Mitchell. Mitchell. It's a throwing star. Now, you... you yeah, you guys, all, you guys have been had. We're all on the same team here. No, I'm yeah. telling you, we were like... Well, then our friends no, are liars. Maybe they were lied to. That's a good point. But a five, Mike, would you look up a five-star Michelin restaurant, though, just period, in the United States? 
because if it had a Michelin star, that's a big, that's a massive deal itself. They were saying this to be place one. was like more like better than any restaurant in Tennessee. That's what I said. I said that, and then yeah. we ate there. Well, fine, it's fine. Yeah, was it super expensive? See, I feel like I'm just smashing. We didn't pay for it. A little tiny. No, 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 no. That's no. What you were saying it to me, still, like, don't do it. You can't build was, it. You I, can't build it up and. You guys, what made it not good is they built it up to you. I bet if you went to it and you were like, there's Listen, a restaurant in it, Wilson, Arkansas, it'd be freaking awesome. I'm not going on the record saying it's bad. It, I went was, to not, the, it was really good. It was probably one It of, can't live up to a five-star expectation, though. It's like movies. When somebody will be like, this is the greatest movie ever. Even if it's awesome, I'll be like, meh. You, it was overhyped. Oh, See, I've never, but we've never eaten any, like, I don't even know what Michelin was. So I, I didn't really go in expecting it to be just out of this world. Yeah. Mike, what do you have? I went to the official website that has every restaurant listed. There yeah. are 16,000 Michelin star restaurants in the United States. There are zero in Wilson, Arkansas. Okay. Are ahead. there any in Arkansas at all? Let's see. Because I would think there would be less than three, if any. I also want to know what the very top one is. Like the, the, the best Michelin restaurant. Let's in see if I can search just what Arkansas. What if it's like the Michelin tire center? And they just give themselves would be sick. that with a, like, a, got one chef like a concession there, right? stand. Though it's not even good, but they get to give themselves five stars They're because just they eating sausage biscuits. They own the brand. Yeah. Microwave. Yeah. Does it? Does you it? You can only search by city. Look up Little Rock. Little Rock has none. Yeah, then we're not gonna look up Nashville. Nashville doesn't have one. I'm telling you, it's so rare. When you guys are like Mich- yeah. Wilson, Arkansas, they were. Okay, then, listen, yeah. man, they. I see, because I called, I called Jordan, and I was like, hey, we're going to, like, a Michelin restaurant? Or she was like, like, Michelin star? We well, like, that's what I said when you said that, too. I was like, in the whole state, I couldn't believe we had one. So much so that they gave us the same story you did about it being the Michelin tire shop. Yeah. They gave us that whole rundown about this. That's like Maybe they have five it. Michelin tires in the back, and we're a five. Could have been a Michelin tire shop before. Yeah, it it could, once was a Michelin was. tire shop that is now a cafe. The star okay, of now Wilson. Coming together. The or star. star. Five wheels, star wheels. Mm. Five Michelin wheels. Five, five spoke wheels. <laughs> so, yeah, that I like that story because of where we took it. Thanks for cleaning it yeah, up. Yeah, it made it way better. That was not a good story. No. It, it, went, it went somewhere good. Itself, it was, as a story itself, it started down here, but fine. Ended. But you needed a real pro like me to make it special. That was not a Michelin star story, but it was. <laughs> I never said anything about that being the good closest story. one to us is in Atlanta. The, what, the only the Michelin only star one. restaurant. What is it? Then how are there sixteen thousand yeah. Michelin star restaurants if there's none in the area? Yeah, they're just all in New York. They're a lot of them are like, clustered in like big, bigger they cities. They are, yeah, like a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Is there one in Sydney? But this is only America. Oh yeah, that's right. Like Sydney, Tennessee. Is that like Wilson, Arkansas? There's definitely not a Sydney. <laughs> Uh, I misread sixteen hundred. Okay, that's still a lot, but yeah. way different than sixteen thousand. Man, I hope those duck guys don't listen to this. They're gonna be real sad. They don't. Uh, they probably don't. They, they don't. Well, they might. They from Arkansas? Well, it's the Davis brothers. Oh, well, Jordan didn't go, but Jacob was with us. Yeah, Jacob Davis was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. But that. he wasn't like the duck guy that told us about the thing. He was just kind of there with us. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, probably, probably Jordan told you guys that. Probably liar. Probably liar. Um, so you guys are brothers. Our whole lives. Yeah. What's the, what's the age gap? Yes. Mm, who's, who's older? I heard you make a comment earlier of be cheating because you said you're, big, you're the big brother. Oh, shit. Yeah. I see, oh, wait. No, you can say that. It's fine. It's a podcast. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, so I heard you say you're older, but I don't know that I would have bet it yeah. either way. It but, usually, people usually guess him for some weird reason. What's, what's the gap? Four? Oh, that's a pretty significant gap. Yeah, like, yeah. My sister's four years younger than I am, and it feels like she's a whole different generation. Well, we got, we're bookended by girls, too, like sisters. So we got... My oldest sister's four years older than him, than him, then he's four years older than me, then I'm four years older than my younger sister. So, yeah. so big you, jump six, 16 years of kids? 12. Wait, four, then four, then four. Uh, 16, bro. Well, no, hold on. Four times four, but that doesn't mean the three gaps are. The gap's 12. Uh, the gap's yeah. 12. So let's say the I, oldest I do math. is four to you, then you get four to your other, and they get four. Yeah, you're, you're right. Thanks. But it, the easy thing to go is because I did the same thing initially. Mm-hmm. Four times four, but the gaps. Gotcha. Right. Are you a math guy? It was my lowest ACT uh, part of my test. I, we, I had to take ACT where I'm from. Same. Okay. What are you most uh, overall, yeah. 31. But, Dang, you're a genius. But you no, know, my math wasn't. I got 28. It was the lowest of all of my, all my uh, stuff. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Come on, bro. What'd nah, you make? I don't know, man. I made a 22 and went to Mississippi State. And was like, never yeah. took it again. 26. Yeah, but 26 is really good. Yeah, I'm I mean, smart. Oh, 20, come on, 31. 20, but 20. Listen, 23, 24. Gets you, like, in-state paid yeah. tuition wherever you want to go. For me, I made a 20-whatever enough to get that one in, like, ninth grade because I just knew that that's how I had to get out of my hometown, right? Mm. So I started taking the 
practice tests and taking the class. I would go to work Same. and save up and take the classes to take the test. Oh, wow. So I didn't learn really anything. I just learned how to take the freaking test. Mm. And I think I'm, so, I'm bright a bit, but you guys know. Which is part of it. That's like Absolutely. the ones that score really well are just really good. I mean, I'm sure they're genius too, but like, yeah, you got to know how to take the mm -hmm. test. Like, like life. Time and all that. You know, you can, oh, no you know, you can be a great singer, but unless you actually know how to sing and know who to get your singing to no and know who to produce it, you know. What are you talking about? Exactly. <laughs> you could be the greatest in the world, but if you don't know how to uh, how to set it up. Or possibly the greatest writer in the world. So is that you? The, the greatest writer that... Uh, that what? That has less than 20 number ones? I don't know. <laughs> Don't think so. But you brought it up. I don't no, know if you. I, I thought you were trying to get me to set you up. I was you, like, bro, you got to bet on yourself. I bet on myself, but I'm not gonna say I'm the greatest that's less than 20 number ones. What I'll are you say that. About? There's I'm a, the great, there's I'm a, the greatest that less. That than is a giant. Uh, that is a plethora yeah. of songwriters in this town. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. really great, great, great. I, I great thought song. you were setting me up to set you up, though. That's what I, I was feeling. That like we're playing pickup, we hadn't played ever before. Yeah. But I could kind of feel like the ball was coming, and so I guess I didn't. The ball hit me in the face. Well, my granddad always said, "Let somebody else do the bragging for you." So I'm I try. Just, I just literally tried. So well, set you, you up. tried to set me up to do the bragging on me. He put a compliment yeah. up, and then you just yeah, you rejected it at the rim. You, where'd you guys grow up? What town? What's the name of the town? Savannah, Tennessee. So again, right where, and I always told people this, right where Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee meet. Do they have a name? Because in Arkansas, Texas, we call it Texarkana or Arkla Tex when it's Louisiana. Uh, Do they? Arkla Tex? That's stupid. I don't call I didn't name it that. Uh, it's a three star name, though. Okay. Uh, three Michelin stars. <laughs> um, but it's Ark, LA, Louisiana, Tech. Arkla Tex is what Can't that's. That, yeah. but so, what do, do they have a name for that region? No. It should be ten, uh, Tennessee, Bama. Yeah. I, that would never work. Bama Mississippi. Or Mississippi. Ten oh, every, Mississippi everybody Bama. would fight over who's first. Bama Mississippi C. <laughs> Tennessee Bama's pretty good. I Those Bama. feel like Mary Poppins songs. Bama Mississippi C. Mississippi Calabasta Capilla Dos. Mississippi Bama's not bad. That's kind of got a ring. There's no tippy though. Miss Mississippi. The but tippy. But oh, you tippy. put the oh ten Tennessee Bama. Miss You gotta Bama. start with Bama because that's the weird one. Miss Bama. Bama Tennessee. That's a good one. I just, For those I already that said all these. Maybe you just. Did in a little flick, and you scanned this part of the podcast first. We are speaking English. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, we're really, sorry, we're really wrecking it right now right. Yeah. in the best it's way. It's a little river town, man. We're river rats. Uh, right on the Tennessee River. Uh, Pickwick Lake. We're real close to that. That's where we grew up. So I grew up in Mountain Pine, Arkansas, and really all there was to do, which is why everybody did it, was hunt and fish, basically. Yeah. Unless you wanted to go to town, but town was hot springs, and that was 30,000 people, so it wasn't like a city. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what most folks did their whole life, and I did it uh, my whole life until I didn't do it anymore, and I'm just like, eh, I can pay for food. I don't want to kill any animals. Also, sure. also I'm like, I don't want to kill any animals anymore. I'm, a, I, you know, yeah. all my friends still I, hunt like crazy. D although duck hunting, I'd probably kill some ducks. Because yeah. duck hunting is the most fun because it's the most, at when, when you finally hear, <laughs> when they're coming over the top of you, yeah. and everybody's claiming they shot it, yeah. and you know for sure that Reed didn't shoot the thing, yeah, but know. still, that's fun. And if you have a good dog... Yeah, so dog, dog, dog elevates it. And if you have a good dog, yeah. yeah. Other than that, I'm good. Duck hunting's yeah. real social, too. Like, it's like, yeah. I mean, you cook. You can cook some biscuit or breakfast in there. You know, you can have... I guess you guys had to travel to duck hunt, though. Right. I mean, West Tennessee. It's only a couple hours. Really? Yeah, it's not that far. We didn't have... We, we could go over to eastern Arkansas where the timbers were flooded and do... Oh, yeah, where you're you guys all up would, in That's the flower. Right yes. Yeah. That's, the, that's the jam. Or we could... We, even, we had you know, a semblance of that where I lived, so we wouldn't really have to travel, so it didn't feel very social. It just felt like what we would do, just be there when the sun comes up, pray to God you don't fall in and water get in your waders. Yeah. It was like those days. Yeah, for and, sure. And then go home. But duck hunt was my favorite. See, we didn't grow up doing that. We were all turkey and deer. That's all we did our You still hunt or stand? Ball, dog hunt? All, all, well, no, no dogs. We It's actually illegal to... Run dogs and Tennessee. Run dogs. And it is. Yeah, That's how little I know about hunting now. I mean, rab here. you can rabbit hunt with dogs, but I mean, you can't big. You can't deer really? hunt with dogs. Yeah, they've outlawed it because what ended up happening was you, you'd have people that would turn their dogs loose on their property, but the deer sure. would jump, obviously, because he don't know, he don't know fence lines, so he would jump. Arkansas ones did though; they're way smarter than Tennessee ones. Oh, they'd stand. Yeah, Arkansas deer knew what the <laughs> land, land plots were. ACT, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they probably took the ACT <laughs> pre test. <laughs> But yeah, we hunted and fished our whole lives, and it, it intermingled with, uh, you know, our music. And yeah. and our dad's a Baptist preacher, so we were always like in church singing and, and hymns. And and my parents loved music. My 
my mom's a big Elvis fan. Her mom's a big Elvis fan. Uh, and then my dad loved the Doobie Brothers and, and all that. And West Tennessee, though. I like how you say my dad like he's not my dad, too. Well, I didn't know. I don't know if you guys had you have different headphones dads. On. I can't Same hear dad. what you're saying. Yeah. Same dad. You have uh, West Tennessee. That's, I mean, that's Elvis land. Not. I'm talking about Mississippi. Yeah. Well, and where we're, where we're from, Savannah, like you had Memphis two hours east mm-hmm. or west. Uh, Nashville was two hours northwest or northeast. I'm terrible with that. Location. Yeah, you're messing. And up. then the shows are real close. So I mean, like you had like a hodgepodge of sure. a bunch of influence and different styles of music. And I think that a lot got there. I think a lot of riders from that area take Singleton, who's one of our best buddies, Jonathan Singleton, Jesse Alexander, and all those cats that are kind of from that area, kind of do that. Like it's a little bit of there's a little bit of rockabilly in there. There's a lot of soul, and then there's a lot of country. There's a lot of black influence uh, more than just influence like absolutely. like country music is built on black artistry and european artistry i mean i would say almost music period is yeah. Built on that. yeah and so you know when you talk about even elvis like mm-hmm. let's be honest let's be honest he watched a lot of really great black artists He's imitating a lot and just yeah. did impressions absolutely and sure and was good was at told it. not to yeah right yeah, man. but that's a great place to live for music yeah, we didn't even know it. But honestly, there was four, you know, we had uh, two other siblings. So our sister was an alto. Uh, our baby sister did some soprano stuff. I was like a baritone, and Reed was a way high tenor. Everybody sang. Is that true? So everybody yeah. sang. They can, they can all sing. They We're probably the, two of the worst. We sang all the time. My parents like, don't really. but they Because there would, be, there would be 45 minutes of singing every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. And so we would be in those. I mean, we and it was our dad, man. We heard that Joker talk so much, you just kind of get tired of like listening to him, right? So we would start swapping parts in the sitting in the pew with our mom, and it just taught us natural harmony, and and uh, it really ingrained a lot of those melodies uh, into us, and and, and kind of translates into what we do now. So, is nature or nurture then? As far it sounds like your family is. Uh, performers at least i mean your dad to be a really effective baptist preacher somebody who goes to the baptist church the best preachers were also great performers i would also say storytellers it was he's a he's very good and when in our family that's all they do like we get together for easter or christmas and it's just who's telling the next story and what's dramatic and 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 that that just kind of be, became our you know mo as far as songwriters like we just wanted to tell stories music was mixed into that a whole lot uh, we we were both kind of into English and writing and expression, and it just kind of it just kind of fell out. When could you guys actually be friends, like peers? Because oh, the, four years is a long time when you're kids. Like it, that's a pretty decent gap. Yeah, and I was always huge, and he was like tiny. Like for a long time, he was like this tall. So <laughs> I would this like, true story. I would like like he would uh, okay. For example, one but time that's not a true story. He did three inches. That's not I mean, but, well. Yeah, at like, one time, uh, yeah. At yeah. one time. Sure, but you didn't know him then. I didn't know him. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. Go but ahead. I had a feeling he was yeah, going to be a jerk. <laughs> so I remember I came in from school one day and I was looking out the window and Reed and a neighbor were jumping on the trampoline, right? And like I said, dude, I was, I mean, I was probably. My dad says Dan came out needing a shave and a sandwich. Yeah. He said my sister came out all pretty and then I came out needing a shave and a sandwich. So I've just always been like this, right? So I look out the window and I see our neighbor. Did he kick you in the throat? I don't know. He, he jumped up and then they I, were jumping on the trampoline. I went like black. This. And all of a sudden it was like, pow! He just karate kicks him in the face, and it was like nobody can kick me, my brother in the face except me, man. You know, if I want to kick him in the face, I can do that, but you can't. And I'm, it was just like an instant fire kind of run, and I jumped back and I had him, I had his, I had him, his arms across his body, and I was rearing back, and Reed's like tiny little mini hand was like, no, you know, and like <laughs> don't hit him. And so, but that was how it always was. For a long time. And then when he got to be probably in high school and I was in college, you know, I went to Mississippi State and he, he was doing his thing back at home and we just became buddies and he grew a little bit and got a little taller so you could accept him. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, but I always beat him in everything. Even when I was small, like I, ah, I whooped his ass in every everything every driveway is... basketball game we ever had. Ah. But as far I mean, as far as back as I can remember, bro, it's 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 been like this. You did yeah, punch me in the face twice. So you guys Only were ever t- punch me in the face. more than the dynamic of big brother taking care of little brother. You were f- like buds at 14 and oh, 10. Oh, no, I can't say that. No, no, I, no, mean, I wouldn't say. I mean, it was still like, it was very brotherly. Yes. You know, like it yeah. wasn't best friend. High school, college then got really, yeah. really cool. Yeah. And then, then college. So when you finished high school, what'd you do? Uh, I stayed in town for a year. And then 
I went to UT Knoxville, failed physics twice, called him, was like, hey, I don't really know what to do with my life. He was like, bro, move to Nashville. So what had you done by the time he graduated high school? Well, I was in a band, and our band actually started getting some looks up here. Name I didn't know we were getting looks. Name of the band? Soul Gravy. Okay. So we were kind of a funk, once again, we we're like a funk country thing. We could do... And we started popping off in Mississippi and, and doing that little SEC kind of circuit, you know. And, and we were on, we were actually on the road with guys like Brantley. Uh, Corey Smith was out a lot. And there was a bunch of other cover bands. But there were some guys that really turned into, you know, legit stars that we were kind of with. And so we were getting the look. We, I think we were a little probably out of the commercial box necessarily at the time. You know, now we would probably fit right in. But – we started getting looks and, and came up here and we're hanging out with riding with guys. Leslie Roberts over at BMI started hooking me up with Rhett and uh, Rhett Aikens and some of, some of those dudes. And, and I built up a little catalog and uh, I recognized that I could get a deal if I had good enough songs. That took a super long time. Uh, I went and met with Sony. <clears throat> I wrote a song with Randy Montana that got picked up by Luke Bryan at the time. And they were like, oh, my gosh. Let's sign him real quick, you know? And so... Picked up as in put on hold or he cut it? He put it on hold and then it ended up getting cut later by Justin Moore. So that was like, okay, we can take a chance on this guy. So uh, I went to a meeting and saw some softball bats leaning up in the corner of this guy's office. And as I was walking out, I asked the lady, hey, where does he play softball? And she was like, oh, he plays over at Fieldstone Farms. So I was working on a box truck at the time. And I... So I got an umpiring job at Fieldstone Farms. And I umpired for two years until he came there one night when I was umpiring. He's like, what are you doing out here? I was like, I'm hustling, dude. You're like, you ain't giving me no money to write. So I got to pay rent somehow. I was living in um, one of my buddy, well, it's a buddy. It's a girl, but a girl's closet, basically. And uh, paying rent doing that. <laughs> and, uh, Reed would come and crash sometimes. And just trying to just trying to get in any way we could. Sure. You know? And uh, he was like, well, dang, you're hustling. He's like, you got some songs? And I said, yeah, I do. And he said, well, come see me. But let's, let's get a day. And so I borrowed... 750 bucks from my granddad, R.I.P. Daddy Spud, you know, I love you. 500 from my sister. Paid pizza to my band. Cut a demo at Studio 19 with six songs. Sony held it for nine months. And I would, I would just keep my phone just charged, dude, 100% in my I mean, just every time it vibrated, I was praying it was them. And so finally they called back and were like, hey, man, we're ready to do something with you. And so I have kind of been there ever since. I mean, it's been 10 years I've been a. I've been writing it, Sony. When they say do something with you, like sign you to a publishing deal? Yeah. And you kind of have, the, they have the same kind of skeleton around you? That, I mean, I know people change, but are some of the people the same? No. It is it's a, all, it's, it's all. almost a completely really? different regime. There are some that are still there, I guess. Yeah, but it, it and, and, and honestly, those first years uh, were tough, you know, because like the guy that got me over there went somewhere else. And then I moved to the, another lady and then she got, went somewhere else. So it, it it really is going like full circle, I guess, back to what you were saying. Uh, having having people in place to, you know, champion your songs is is an extremely extremely important thing. What about so you moved here after you left Knox? No- yeah, I left Knoxville. And did you um, come right here? Or did you go home first? No, I came. I went to MTSU and graduated. Got it. Uh, did the rim program. Um, actually. Me and Hardy were there at the same time. Me and Mitchell Tempe were in a songwriting class together. And the first day of that class, they made us, like, sing an original song. And so I, I wasn't, like, I hadn't written a lot of songs at that point. I just, I, I love singing. I've always loved singing. And so I actually went to Dan. I was like, hey, bro, what's the best song you got? And he showed it to me. I learned it, went into the class, sang that song. Did you claim it was yours, though? Since it was- Hell yeah. Got, got it, got absolutely. it. Absolutely. Got it. So. And then, Played it at the Bluebird as if it was his. Mm. Yeah, it was like a co-ride. Intellectual Nashville property song. theft. It yeah. sounds like, they, yeah. yeah, definitely. The and then, and then Mitchell played, and after class, he came up to me outside and was like, he was like, "Hey, bro, uh, we were kind of like the only." And I'm so, sorry to anybody else who was in that class, but <laughs> he was like, "Hey, bro, we're kind of the only ones that really knew what we were doing in there." And we started writing some songs, and and then I moved from there. Uh, I, I graduated from there, and then moved to my dad brought his houseboat up and kept it at Percy Priest at a. Uh, the Cove, I think that's what it is, um, right there, Elm Hill Marina, and lived there for four years, and uh, and moved, yeah, same same furniture company he worked for. I, I moved furniture and wrote when I could, and uh, and in my kind of, it, it was really never my dream. Like I always, I just like I said, I always loved singing, so I, I knew I wanted to sing, but I didn't know in what capacity I wanted to, and so I kind of moved to town with, I guess, chasing the artist thing, you know, bunny ears, 
and quickly found out once I got my first pub deal in town and doing the artist development thing, I went on the road a few times and, and I was out playing one weekend and I called back home and Dan and my dad were at deer camp putting steaks on the grill. And that's the last gig I ever played on the road. And I was like, man, I, I love playing, but I hate the rest of it. I was miserable. And so I'd fallen in love with writing songs um, through those years, you know, kind of chasing that thing and decided to jump the fence. And, and I was 50% on the artist thing, 50% trying to write songs. And I just I put all my eggs in the writing basket. And and I remember the day I told Dan, he was like, bro, this is, you're, it's not going to work. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, yeah, Will, bro, I'm going I'm to do wait, it, man. Wait, why, do it. why did I, I don't remember saying this. Not we were in Fire work. Hall, room five. We had just got done with the co-writing. When I told you you weren't good? And I told, and I looked at Dan, I was like, hey, man, I'm not doing the artist thing. And he was like, what do you mean? Because that was a plan. Like, Oh, no, I was saying you're not going to get, you're not going to be getting the quality of rights that you're getting when you tell everybody you're not doing the artist thing. Got it. Because. Bro, you don't have to. <laughs> they want to ride with somebody who, it might, yeah. who might have a song. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, for sure. But anyway. Wait, I, I got a question. Hold on. Let's yeah, go for it. Pause. You lived on a boat for four years. What's it? Were you having to pay like slip rent? Yeah, it was $400, so we split it. It was. Oh, you both lived on the boat $200. for $200. Yeah. I was there first, and then Dan got out of the closet. My bad, bro. Out of her closet. My bad, bro. You came out of her My, closet. Dan came out of the closet yeah. and moved on the boat with us. And uh, and yeah, we paid $200 a piece. And, but, dude, we had Wi-Fi there. Um, there was, yeah. You know, we... We I put a I put a antenna up so we could have direct TV. It wasn't that and, bad until like until legit girlfriends started coming around. You know what I mean? Because like two dudes on a boat is not a not a bad scheme, but like when when you have frozen sewage and a girlfriend over, it just yeah. I used to tell I used to tell people I lived there when I graduated. I, I moved uh, onto the boat. And well, technically, once again, we didn't live there. We just visited three hundred fifty five days. Yeah. But anyway, 355. So you you can be there every day except once. You can't claim residency. You have to just visit. So, like for example, if I stay in California a bunch, which I don't, but if I were, because there were times when I was doing shows, I, or even Mike and I lived in California for a few months at a time, like doing TV shows. Mm -hmm. They were like, well, as long as you don't live here more than six months you can claim residency everywhere else, which you wanted to because taxes are ridiculous. Right. Huh. But I never heard of 355 well, or whatever that, or 364. I, think he might, 364, right? I don't sorry. think he knows. So how if, many you don't, days if you're not there, there but... every day and you stay one more day somewhere else, you claim residency in the one day. Yeah, well, you just, you can't get mail there because technically you're not on land. So there, it's a whole, it was a whole own, thing. Yeah, you can't own it because it's, it's. Yeah, you can't own it because Corps of Engineer Land. Corps of Engineer Land, the state owns that lake, right? So. You just visit a whole lot. And every time you walk to the boat, you wink. Don't worry, guys. I'm just here visiting. I'm just staying the week. Just here. Week. Yeah. But so, no, I used to tell people, like, I used to tell, like, it, it was story. I used, like, it was easy to to say, hey, I, you know, I live on a boat when you're in college. They're like, oh, that's cool. Let's go, mm -hmm. you know, hang out. But then, like, when four years later, when you're 27 and you still live on a boat moving furniture, it's not. It's not I, so it's cool. Not that, I had a legit cool mental breakdown on that, on that boat. Or it, panic attack, sorry. Panic attack. I had a legit panic attack on that boat. Uh, what triggered it? Lack of movement in my life. And, and uh, on the boat. And, well, it, literally, I had gotten canceled. It was the, I was driving into town. It was raining, I remember. I got canceled, on, of course. Oh, right. Because nobody wanted to ride with me at all. I didn't even have a deal at the time. And so, I was like, gosh, man. And, and I had this, <laughs> I had this, like, little coupe, and it had a, it had a, uh, what's it called? Uh, convertible like uh sun top sun sun sunscreen yeah, sun yeah, yeah, sun sun yeah. so it didn't work water's pouring in through the sunroof i pull back up i start i walk back to the boat man i'm just like defeated all my buddies i mean not all my buddies but i see people that are my age at the time i'm like 29 30 they're like buying houses buying new trucks check out my number one you know like, oh this plaque's so cool look at all these things i get to go to and i was just like I, pro I probably had taco salad made. I was, well, I no, you were cooking. I remember yeah, you were I was, cooking. I loved life on the boat. You were down in the in the galley. Well, yeah, I was older, and it was. Yeah, you're just, four years younger. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. yeah, in four years, you were gonna have panic attack. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, I did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ironic, you say that. So I, came, I was probably like, "What are we gonna do tonight, bro?" I came in and I was just like, "And there's nowhere to hide, right? You're on a boat. It's like 50 square feet." So uh, I pulled the. I was just like, "Oh my gosh, I canceled on again." I was like, "I don't know what I'm doing. Nobody cares about what I'm doing." I'm turning these songs in. Nobody gives a rip, dude. I got no artist friends. Why would anybody? I wouldn't want to write with me either, you know? So I, I was just like, hey, man. He's like, 
man, you, you want some of this crappie? Well, I'm down here frying crappie and got some corn, some Del Monte corn on you. I was like, man, I'm good. Dude. I'm just going to chill. And we had a couch that was kind of like a three-quarter couch. It wasn't like a full size, but you had a couch up there. And I just, that's where, that was like my room was like the couch. So I just kind of pulled the covers over my head. And just as soon as, as my, my covers got <laughs> over my head, I felt the boat go like, which means somebody was coming. It stepped mm, yeah, away. yeah. The tiny doors open, and my dad's like, "Hey, boys, I brought I brought pork steaks. Who's ready to eat?" And I was just like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, can I just? And he's like, "Hey, what are you doing?" You know, just insult to injury, right? He's like, "What are you doing? Why you got the covers over your head, Dan? It's it's eleven o'clock in the morning, man. What are you doing?" And I was like, "Man, can I just like have a second, like?" And that and Reed was like, "Yeah, what's up, Dan? What you know? We're all trying to you know hang out." And he was like. What's going on with you? And finally, I just come unglued and was like, I'll tell you what the fuck's happening. I'm 30 years old. I got nothing going on. All my buddies are buying their second trucks. I'm stuck on a houseboat with you cats eating crappie every two days. I'm exhausted. Nobody wants to ride with me. And I'm a little pissed off about it. And it was just like, it was legit the moment when I was, I, I always go back to that because people are like, oh, yeah, you, oh, Luke Combs just fell into your lap, didn't he? And you're like, no, man, there were some really, really, really hard days that earned me the spot that I have now, you know? Or at least made you appreciate it even more. A and bazillion. Understand, of, or understand how hard it is to get it. Dude, and, it and how is precious it so is. Yeah. hard, man. And, I mean, it even delays everything. It delays everything because you're so focused on ha having that thing work because it's like the padlock, right? Like, once you unlock a publishing deal and a hit song in your brain at the time well then you have enough money to support a family and to buy a place and to get married and then you can have kids and you know what i mean it's like this whole effect and, and hardy and i and reed and i were talking about that it's it's almost like if you come into this thing and, and you're just running at it as hard as you can it it delays a lot of the other things in your life yeah because it's a sacrifice first of all i mean even with me i got married i didn't get married till i was 40 right and I don't have any kids yet. You know, we're talking about now having kids. She's good thing. I mean, she just turned 19, so that works for us. Her no, Plenty she, of time. Plenty of time. She's not going she's to not laugh She's not 19. At that. No, she, no, that's legal, though. You I, could. Yeah, I, I could. If I would have said just 17, not, that wouldn't have been, you shouldn't have laughed. I could. I could. Um, but she's 31. And so, she, you know, we're talking about. Yeah. But I'm stunted in a lot of my growth because I only focused on one thing and didn't get it forever. That's what you have to do. But had I not, had I stopped, I wouldn't have it now. Right. Uh, no yes. Doubt. Yes. And so, but to be good at anything, if it's a good parent, if it's a good writer, if it's a good, there is sacrifice. Because you could be mild at everything. <laughs> yeah. You could be good at some stuff and not good. But if you want to be great at something. That you got to put all your you're, energy. You're away. taking some energy out of other yeah. things to be yeah. great. Right. So, yeah. So, and, and that's what, you know, me as coming up, especially under knowing Dan or, you know, being Dan's brother. And then we had Singleton above us, man, like two examples of guys that, we're literally putting everything they had mm -hmm. into this. And so same thing, man. I mean, we, it's just it, – it, it takes time. It takes obviously a lot of effort. And, and at the same time, you got to make money and you got to keep your head above water. Me literally keeping our head above water on living on a houseboat. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, but but you're, you're right, Bobby. you got to – I mean, you got to give it your all for, for a long time. And, and you, there's still no guarantee that there's going to be a day yeah. when it works. So you got to be okay with giving it everything you've got. And at some point, it working or not working. What jobs did you guys have here before you could quit and only pursue music? What was Tim's? Tim Hodges Tim Logistics. Tim Hodges Logistics. Yeah, which was an, an, a, a fancy way of saying we worked on a moving truck and sweated like crazy in the yeah. back of that truck. Moving, you can go, uh, like houses? Furniture. Yeah. You can go to a couple of, uh, of um, what, what, where do old people go for? Nursing homes? Nursing homes, I'm sorry. Uh, and they see, don't all go there. It's not a requirement. I'm just saying. No, no, I think it is now. Oh, is it? It's a five, we have a five star Michelin nursing home here, and Sick. anybody over go. 65 automatically gets That's put in. But you can go to those That's awnings gross. where you drive into those, and and uh, you can see a couple of chunks of concrete <laughs> out of them because of my driving skills of a box truck, bro. You know, the only thing that I would compare to being an artist, or you know, just I, I was talking at uh, ABC News came by because they've been following Laney for a while, and I was fortunate enough, and probably you guys too. I've known Lenny for a long time. Even long before, I had a cut on that first record. Yeah. Sure. Even before she had uh, music that was out. And Lenny 
came to the house once to teach me this thing before she. So I just have a relationship with Lanny. I put her uh, first time she played the Ryman. She played the with Blanco me. Blanco dance, right? That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So I was telling them the story, and I was going into a bit of like you have to have the right people believe in you. You have to be good, and then you have to have the right people believe in you, and you got to be a little different to where it's 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 almost uncomfortable. You need to have something about you that's so different that people will go, "That's probably not going to work." Oh, because man. when it do, when it does work. <laughs> That's what differentiates you from everybody else, and that yeah. ends up being the thing. And dude, talked about it yesterday, my co-write. That gal has been was that from day. That's what one, I was saying. Dude. She taught. The only thing now is that her clothes just cost more. Yeah, but, but, same clothes. Yeah, yeah, instead of going yeah. to the thrift store to get them, she's the freaking Louis Vuitton now, it, and, it, and she's earned them. It's Absolutely. always funny to me when people like they're like, "Oh, the accent's not real," and that. Oh like, yeah, that's you great. Because because we signed at Sony. I signed before her at the publishing deal right before she did at Sony, and. First thing I thought of when I met Lainey was, oh, my God, this chick's country. And, like, one of the country's chicks I've ever met mm-hmm. in my life. And you're right, man. I mean, yeah, she hadn't changed one bit. She's she's basking in Louisiana, man. That's, that's who she is. They it's always say, right through. Like, does, she, does she really talk like that? I'm like, if you met her mom, dude, her mom talks like that. They all talk yeah, like they that. All sister, like that. they all do. That is who she is, man. I'm, I was out with Luke this year, and, and Lainey was, was uh, second or third on that thing. And, man, I, there were many times where I just, like, teared up. Just watching her, just because she just it just took on this whole other like existence, right? And now my four year old little girl like worships Laney, yeah. and it's so it's so weird to me that that that's come that far around. But and she hugged her at a at a Luke show and stuff, and now that's all we listen to. I'm so <laughs> tired of Laney Willis. I can't wait for her to put new music out. But how cool is that to have a friend of mine? be an example and a role model for my four-year-old little girl, man. It's a really cool thing. And also a very similar story to you guys or a similar story to a lot of people because, again, back to art. A lot of people want to do art. Um, art doesn't pay mm-hmm. unless you can prove that your art's going to make somebody else money first. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, very true. And <laughs> everybody wants to do it, so why would they pay a lot to do it if it's just going to be pretty good or mediocre yeah. until it's proven? Um, and so the only thing that I would compare to songwriting or making it that, that's terribly difficult Fun, but terribly difficult, is p- freaking podcasting. Because mm. it's mm. not it's fun to do, but it's difficult to cut through. Because just like music, there are 5,000 people in this town that can play and sing and that no- has a cousin that works here that knows how to get you into that. <laughs> With podcasting, it is a very similar world where there, there, there are a million podcasts. Yeah. First time I'm hearing this, but I like I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And the people that win aren't always the people that are the funniest mm. or the people that can book the best guests. Right. It is like anything else in life. It's consistency, and it's being consistently good and occasionally great. Because if you're trying to be co- consistently great, you won't be. You won't, you won't be. be. You, you can't be consistently great. You moments. Right. Yeah, and take, s- take advantage of the, or take, uh, the opportunity. And I know, you know, with you guys' podcast, so where, where are we on this? It's new. Yes, I know it's that. But new, we're new. Ha, that's why I'm giving you guys the lecture. No, I liked. I was listening to everything okay. you're saying. So, but where? How many? How many episodes have you guys recorded? I don't know. What, sixteen. Okay, that's enough. But then. we've had four come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's enough. If you've recorded sixteen, that's enough to kind of get the early, the early. Oh yeah. Gist of. Yeah. Oh my God, we got to do another one. For sure. While oh, loving yeah. it. Like writing music. No doubt, oh my man. God, I don't want to go write again from nine to four. Yeah. And, then- and also dealing with like the anxiety of like, well, this one's going to suck. You, you know, like, like on the way in town, you're like, well, I don't know what we're going to talk about because we talk about the same thing every sure. time. But always, just like, a, almost just like a co write with, with those, those artists, like, it usually always goes good, man. If you show up. And if you, you have just, decent you people that you trust around you, no doubt. To where if you're, and I, you, I'm sure you guys can speak to this writing too, where if you're having a day where either it hasn't been a good day, personally or some your, your brain's just not right you got a little brain fog you can't think if somebody else is in the room and oh, they're man. able to pick you up because you've been able to pick other people up like that's a, that's the same thing that happens here and i will say that we have an advantage because there's two of us i don't know how you do it I'm amazing I, I mean the 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 good thing, always great i'm the only one that is always great oh yeah yeah we know, yeah, we yeah, yeah that's yeah, why yeah. we're here <laughs> be great today please. you're the only one wearing those baby jordans thank off you whites. hey dude that. when i got these they were like 300 bucks. I think if you looked them up now, Mike, if you look up the North Carolina off-white Jordans, I bet you now, I was telling a friend, 
how much he's appreciated. I won't even say it. I want you to finish the story about podcasting. I kind of know. I kind of know. I, th- I kind of know, too, but I don't want to say okay, it. Okay, let's move. Callum was probably jealous of those. I was he's got some. He's got I, some. I was kind of setting you up to brag for me, but you didn't. You just said I kind of know and waited. So, I'll be happy to no, 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 say good. it. No, I'll be happy to say what, it. What do you think that the retail – it's not retail, but, yeah, go ahead. How much they're worth eight, right now? 18? I don't think 18. I'd say eight. I'd say six to eight thousand. Wait, eight thousand? Yeah, dollars for shoes? I was saying eighteen hundred. Oh, Mike, what do you see? I'm saying eight hundred. I'm saying the last sale was eighteen hundred. Well, not these. Dude, come I, they're on. Different. Hold on. Pay the man. No, dude. No, we no. should have put some, we should have put those I'd shoes be- on that bed. Hold on. And, and, and they've depreciated again. And I suck. Well, don't you don't believe in your listen, boy, right? You don't boy, trust your boy right here? No, no, I do. He is the fastest, but there are times where both of us will find something fast. And then oh, see, let me see what you mean. Tell what you're doing right here. You're co-writing this. Yeah. So what? Absolutely. I, I have an idea for a book called Co-Write Your Life. And the whole point is that you can trust people. Should have said that live, dude. Nobody's if, if they rip mm. it off now. I, we'll, we'll bleep it out. All right. Keep going. Oh, that was kind of it. You just as long as you have someone who <laughs> write the book for you. <laughs> Dude, yes. This guy yes. puts words that's in my called, mouth. Let's come up with an idea. Let's come up with a ghost, ghost writer. Yeah. yeah. Here we you go. You just came up with a ghost can writer idea. Can I leave? Yeah, these, right? What do you have? What? What? what yeah, probably. Are they off white? Yeah, Crap. off white. Are they, what? What are they now? Eighteen hundred. See, they're going up though. They've gone up two hundred bucks in the last time. This last time we talked. Pretty sure I said eighteen hundred, right? We said eighteen. Oh, crap. Lee, man. <laughs> Listen, you cannot. They've gone down then. They were like four or five grand. I, I know, thought they had see, gone up. I got this redneck old thrift store brain that you can't. I, I know how much things are I'll worth. I'll sell them to you for three. No. What size What size are they? Uh, he said you'd like, you're tiny, so it probably wouldn't fit. They're Bro, big, look at. They're probably uh, too big for I'm you. a nine and a half dog. Nine and a half. <laughs> oh, man, really? He don't even know. Bobby, I will take you to. No, we, you will. we can go to a court no, 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 right no, no, now, and I'll ball out I on know. you it's, with these it's boots. It's no on. insult toward you. you. You're not to blame for your genetics. <laughs> I think How tall boss. are you? That's hilarious. <laughs> Should we stand up and try? He's now? taller than you think. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because I saw you in L.A. when we were at the Grammys last year, and I was like, man, he's was taller. that was that working? Like doing the? No, talk, we stayed in the same hotel. We stayed in the same. Well, why didn't Why didn't you say hi? I didn't, I wouldn't. I didn't. I don't know. You were like walking. Look how nervous he is right I now. I was yeah. walking, so yeah. you didn't say hi. Like, we know all the same people. Okay, let me say this. And I would think and I would hope that they say nice things about me because I people just, that, I, that we know, I'm talking, the people that we know say nice, him, nice, say Bobby, nice, say nice things about you. And if I saw you, I would be like, what up? Well, I didn't, I, I, it was my, first <laughs> off, first off, it was my first gig. Okay. I had to tune a guitar, which I'm not a guitar tuner. For the Grammys, my first gig was the was tuning the guitar for Luke to play. What do you what mean your first gig? I went out on the road with Luke for a year as his guitar tech, as a star tech. Were you writing as well? Yes, got that it. was the whole yes, sir. Got motive. It. He knows that this is not a secret. Got it. So, but I still had to get that son of a gun in tune for the Grammys. I hear you. And the first minute of the song is just him and acoustic. So sorry if I might have been a little stressed out and not been like, Bobby. To say hi? Me, me, me. When I'm sure that happens to you all the time, dude. You're like I'm a guitar tuner. I'm a big fan. You're an international superstar. No, it wouldn't even be about that. It would be about, hey, we have a bunch of the same friends. Bro, you know you've been like, oh, cool, cool, cool. I'm out. Yes. <laughs> that would make for a funny story. I just hit my tooth with this <laughs> microphone, dude. This is stupid. Is Why don't Bobo. I have a legit mic, it's, Mike? It's Bobo in here. Because I wanted that to happen. Headphones. Big Brother this came in. Got, and now, now you got to get a crown a bill for on your tooth. freaking tooth. Yeah. We should have done it at our studio. Dude. This place is Bobo. <laughs> dude, he's got a sim in this place. This place I'm just kidding. Sick. This place is sick, dude. The, I don't even know what Bobo means. I'm just looking at you to, to That's fill like an old Mississippi term of... I don't know Bobo. Like janky. You know what janky means. Yeah, yeah. Same. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I had to t- take a step down to come do this. Um, that's not like we didn't walk past the infinity pool. Well, <laughs> the infinity <laughs> pool is sick, dude. Thanks, I like man. the dog. Uh... Thanks, man. What dog? Dog bridge. Oh, dog bridge. Dude, that is. So you guys, will... you know why you like it? Because you grew up hillbillies like I did. Now, we bought this house. There was nowhere for our dogs to go out. Because it's smart. And because there's a pool, and I don't want the dog drowning. We have a bulldog. I'm not worried about Eller yeah. because she's like 13 different dogs, and they right. lived forever. No but the doubt. bulldog will drown. Yep. Yeah. So we can't let them come into the yard. There was no way to get them from the house to the side yard. So you know what we did? We drew on a napkin that bridge love with it. plywood, and they came out, and they built the freaking bridge. Sick. I love and this then one. we've painted. So that's literally what we did. I mean, I think- we, we cut a hole in the garage. You should patent that. 
That's, I mean, that's, I didn't invent the bridge. That's been out for a while. You the bridge. Dog, you yeah. invented the dog, <laughs> dog bridge, though. Uh, you invented that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't Come know. Man, I'm just looking for ways to make there. separate streams. No, I, <laughs> no, trust me. I feel you. Uh, why did you guys start doing a podcast together? Like, what, what was the motivation other than you think you have a lot of stories to tell? Like, well, we had one. Like, we started the Brothers Hunt actually on the front porch of our deer Maybe camp. Maybe you should explain is, the difference between the podcast and what the Brothers Hunt is. Well, the the brother the brothers hunt was just a, was a brand thing that we started sure. back in the day, and we were literally sitting on a two by four front porch of our fifth wheel deer camp down in West Tennessee, and and it it kind of started where where we were going out west and 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 doing these hunts and these cool things, and our dad couldn't go, so we started filming them to come back and show him, and then we started showing our buddies, and they were like, dude, this is kind of great content, mm-hmm. man. So we kind of started a, the brothers hunt, the brand. And, and started putting videos online and YouTube and, and going all these places and filming. And were you guys it, monetizing that at all? No, dude. We didn't know what we were doing. No. Yeah. So you were doing it for fun, a passion project. Absolutely. Got it. Yeah. yeah. And then it turned into where we started people around town. We were, we were writing in, in town while this was going on, and, and our co-writers and artists and buddies started started seeing us as the Brothers Hunt. And then so we made a sweatshirt, and the sweatshirt kind of took off, and we made more sweatshirts, and... And then they were like, we should do a podcast. So then we we literally did a Brothers Hunt podcast for we did like ten or twelve episodes, and and uh, and it was just so much work. And I didn't know what we were doing. I was doing what Mike was doing, except a way worse job than this. And it was a headache. We're trying to and, balance the sure. the 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 recording of it, the booking of the of the person there, the content, and then getting it out and getting it. I mean, it was just as it, well as trying to write songs and, and trying to get yeah. like like get the first cut you know i mean which we were talking about earlier like we had a lot of energy going toward this thing instead of going toward the songwriting thing and i just met jordan uh, a little bit later and and it was just there was too many things to balance so we just kind of kicked it off and kind of took a break and and i honestly thought we didn't really know what to do with the brothers hunt and and i honestly thought it was gonna kind of just kind of go away and we might sell a sweatshirt which would have been fine fine, yeah and we were okay with that yeah um and then you know, we end up going. Luke calls us and says uh, he wants us to go on this meat eater episode um, where we go hunt antelope with with Steve and those guys out in Wyoming. We went and we did the podcast with Steve, and we talked about country music the whole time. And Steve was just enthralled by it, and his listeners loved it. And then he comes up with the idea of, "Hey, what if we do this?" And this is three or four years down the road now. Comes up with the idea of, "What if we do this country music outdoor podcast?" And calls Luke, and Luke's like, "Well." I know the only people in town that that can do that is are these guys, and and that's kind of I mean, dude, it was we weren't you know I mean we weren't expecting it, we weren't looking for it, it just kind of was presented to us. The Meat Eater is a live as an outdoor lifestyle yeah. brand mm-hmm. too. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's like it's kind of the same. It's kind of like the Western version of what we are, which which what we are is is essentially trying to to paint hunting the way that we in fishing and the outdoor lifestyle the way we were brought up in it which is mega respect. If you're going to take an animal, you use every part of it, you know, and, and, and so it was kind of just a lifestyle brand for us that translated into, to a media brand. And, uh, so we're obviously plugged in with a lot of these artists and a lot of the writers. And I will go on record saying, I think songwriters are arguably the coolest people in the world, especially, and most interesting. You're a songwriter though. That would be like me saying, I think left-handed people are the smartest freaking people ever. It's kind of a backlash. Should have and a said compliment about himself, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Right, you know what? I'll, I'll go on I'll record and say that. artists are the coolest people <laughs> yeah. in the world. So that's what I. Well, but but they are songwriters. But you, that's artists you though. But you but you just literally gave a compliment to yourself. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Hold into the fire, Bobby. Let's go, dude. Yeah, we'll wait for you. I'm trying to think. Yeah, no, you're good. We I'm got, just saying. Okay, bro. maybe I should say, to me, music industry people are the coolest people in the world to interview. Because of the stories, right? Because their their entire existence is built on storytelling. So whether you want them to or not, there's going to be interesting things that come out of an hour and a half conversation. And a lot of them do share the same interests that we do. I mean, we had Colby Calais on there yesterday, and uh, she's not a hunter. She doesn't fish, really. You know, she li- But she likes outdoors, and she likes to go shoot skeet, and she likes to do these other things. And I was so nervous coming into that thing, I was like, Dude, what am I going to, how are we going to relate? And it just flowed and it was effortless and she's so cool. And she's like the greatest singer of all time. And it was just, it was easy, you know, because those people, 
besides just being extremely talented, they're also interesting and have interesting stories. Yeah, I think creatives are interesting because you got to be messed up to pursue it. Like something's there's there's got to be something a little off, or sure. you're completely naive. Yeah, yeah. And I think both happened to me. Right, I came from a place where nobody did anything like this, and something's a little off. So I didn't know. Yeah. And also, it's like, why can't I do it? And let's. And so I think that the creatives, just in general, like if you got to just create something out of nowhere, uh, lyrics, a melody, you got to paint a picture. Right. You gotta, like that is a special trait that if you do it over time and you refine it, you've probably done it a lot of time, refining it, not making any money, and really struggling. Did you find yourself when you were growing up in Arkansas, like, did you see this? Uh, did you kind of no, know yeah, this we, was going to happen? Absolutely. It doesn't even happen as big as I think it's going to happen. Same. Like, if I, yeah, if I, I didn't believe in me, nobody else would, because no nobody believed in anything where I was from. Right. We were, because they didn't we, have, we were the same way. Yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't belief in being able to do anything, because you were just trying to survive. Like, you, right. did, you didn't do, have dreams. Right. You didn't have time to believe it. Yeah, it was. You got to get to you work. You got to make money. <laughs> you got to go to the yeah, mill. You got to provide for you. Go, yeah, so, but yeah, I always felt like, and I still do. Like, like, I literally can do, if I want to be president of the United States, I feel like I can Amen. go be president of the United States. Amen, okay. bro. And I Preach. feel like if I, if I do, I'm going to have some trouble at first, and it's going to be hard, um, and it should be. But nothing's ever come easy. But also, I think my God-gifted talent, which I hate being called talented because I feel like I've earned it all, my talent is tenacity, which is I just don't stop. And it sucks sometimes, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. But you just don't stop. Right. And I think that itself is so valuable. It is. Because, Extremely valuable. Yeah. I mean, that, it, to me, and it, consistency and tenacity. Totally. The people, you mix in a little talent in there, and you can be something. Man, if I had that part, I'd have it all freaking figured out. I tell people all the time, like, it, it feels like when I moved to town, and, and, and I say Mitchell because we moved to town at the same time, we graduated at the same time, the guys that are working, now that are successful in the music industry are the ones that didn't move home and didn't didn't stop and and you can see it across the board with Laney with with Mitchell with uh, I mean I'll throw me in that category like we're all on our come up because of what you're talking about there is no and people say you got you can't have a, a second option you can't you just gotta you, you gotta this is what you gotta do and you gotta do it till you either fall over dead or or you make it you can have other things that you do to support it. Meaning, sure. if you gotta go got to go work, I yeah. think you kind of have to. Yeah, I mean, so I, and p- sometimes people will be like, "Well, that's a plan B." No, 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 that's a prop up of of what, you're propping yourself up yeah. so you can still accomplish it. Your mind. And I think most, and even the most successful people I know have been really bad at things that they're really good at now. Mm-hmm. I remember a guy told me, I, I saw his mom somewhere, and I said, "Hey, how's so and so doing?" And she said, "Oh, he's doing really good. He he wants to become an author, an author." And I was like, "Oh man, that's that's awesome." I said. So what happened? And she said, there's, I said, well, is he, is he writing while he's working? Because he was like a bellhop or something for a while. I said, is he writing while he's working at the hotel? She was like, no, he quit that. And I was like, he quit that? She was like, yeah. I was like, because see, why? And she was like, well, he wants to devote all his time to writing. And I'm like, yeah, that's not functional. Like, That's not sustainable. It's not like sustainable. His life will not dude. be sustainable. Right. No, yeah. man. And, and, and if you can ever, it, a lot of it is about buying time too, right? Like, Stay like have having enough. Uh, the word shouldn't be success, but having enough action to keep you in town long enough to learn the craft in order to be great at it from other people who are great at it, right? So I attribute I, I I attribute what I know about songwriting to the guys that I learned it from, which were Jason Matthews, Casey Bethard, yeah. uh, shoot Michael, Michael Heaney. Heaney. Uh, I mean, tons of ton, there's tons. I mean. I feel like I'm not naming them all. I should name it's them like all. Like an award speech whenever you didn't mention your wife. Uh, thank you for this Grammy. I'm like, <laughs> so don't worry about that. Thanks to my label. And yeah. My, and uh, yeah. God, and you get back, you're like, God dang it. I, I didn't, didn't say anything. I, I didn't mention my wife and my mom. Yeah. Um, Let me thank Jesus. And those guys would tell the same struggle story and talk about the guys that they learned from. Sure. It is a never-ending cycle. The people who win are the people that stay in, good, bad, especially if you don't come from like, Crazy rich means. For sure. Listen, if you, yeah. that's just a that's, whole, a that's, that's an outlier. No, that's a, that's a you come story. from a bunch of money. Yeah, you, I want to like music. Okay, right. good. <laughs> However, most people aren't like that, and the winners are those that just stay in the game and don't win for a long time. We got to shout out Jonathan though, because I feel like Singleton was the IV drip that kept us like kind of alive in the worst times. Whether that was sleeping on his couch, or he would just. <laughs> 
happened to buy pizza for all of us yeah. Yeah. and then we would take the leftovers to the boat you know or that's awesome here's five or ten bucks man get you some gas to get home do you guys have and feel the need to make sure that you find the people to do that too now a million percent yeah i, I mean i've even started signing a couple of riders just because i feel like i got to do something for somebody else who wants to do the same thing as i did yeah. and i mean you've done that too because you know how hard it is and you just need somebody to believe in you. It's the hardest. Yeah, and, and you need somebody to open some of those doors, yeah. man. You can't. You can't. Some of those doors are so heavy when you get to town that you can't get them open yourself. Especially at your size. <laughs> Bro, can you nine. imagine trying to open nine, one, nine and a half. Half. one of these rich-ass yeah. doors <laughs> on one of these publishing houses? There's no way. Yeah, Mike had to open the one just to get us in this. Dang. Bro, bring some weights in here and let's yeah. see who can throw them up. Big. I'll, I'll do it. We were Before we started the podcast, before you guys came in, we were talking about a lot of you guys' songwriting success and um, – talking about the podcast we've we've set it all up before we started i guess now that you've recorded 16 but you have four out it's called god's country yeah um if do you ever go back and listen to one of those first episodes and this is the the last little tidbit i'll leave you with do you ever go back and listen to those first wait episodes? are we done are we in we're about to be we've done oh. an hour so oh, dude it, that is something about podcasting that blows my mind an hour when you're listening to them an hour kind of seems like but when you're in them it goes by so fast Unless it's somebody who, who's not good at being interviewed and it goes by like Well, this. then you don't even air it. You don't even air that episode. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Um, oh. Man, I I don't listen to because I'm, a, I'm my own worst critic. Okay. Fair. Love it. Cool. When you do, you're going to hate it. No doubt. And you should hate it. Just like you should hate the first songs you wrote. Yeah. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't be getting any better. And so for me, same deal, right? Like I try not to listen to me a lot, but sometimes I have to listen to me back just to cr be cringing so I feel good about myself because I know I've gotten better. Like yep. it's almost like medicine. I got to go take this medicine that tastes bad, but I know it's going to make me better. Yeah. So I, I can listen to something a year ago, five years ago, and be like, God, dang, I suck. I didn't suck, but I've, right. but since then I've, you know, accumulated some skills and sure. some abilities some that – make that seem bad and you guys will go through this now with podcasting because oh. you'll hear it back and go god we sucked and, but if you didn't do that that means you wouldn't be getting any better i kind of did that on the josh thompson episode we were interrupting each other so much and but, the fact that you could hear that shows growth that you even know that but he's still I, doing it so he didn't really grow okay you just I, did I take it right it then. you just did it as i'm talking you just did it and i think headphones yeah. helps with that because right now we're doing one with you're headphones. sitting six inches from your brother i, I know. know but it, it, it what it's making me do is get GTFO of, of when you start talking. But I'm the host. And if I know, you did, and if you or didn't, him. I, if, if you didn't, no, I'd push you out of the way. I, well, good luck with that. But I'm just saying, in our podcast, we tend to step over each other a sure. whole lot. Or and how I about think, this option? We give. Or how about you just did it again? Yeah. We get because what I'm about to say is it felt good. funnier. Yeah. We give our guest one set of headphones and not the other one, so the other one doesn't really even know what's. This going has on. all been a mental thing. It's been a psychological oh, test it anyway. A, it was a, it was oh. a test. It was a test anyway. ACT. We haven't even recorded this. This has all been a this has all been a test on you guys. We haven't even started. Can we start? Yeah. No. No. I don't want to. Now I'm ready. We're not going to air it. So. Just like we he said, either. yeah, we're not going to air it. So. Okay, let me say this. Uh, you guys check out God's Country Podcast. Um, you guys writing every four days a week? Yeah. yeah. Three to four? Three to four. How, how booked is your calendar out? A few months. Wait, for, for what? For To write. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, March. Yeah, congrats. Thank you. Like Thank you, you. Worked, you worked hard to work this hard. Yeah. Like you should be tired. It's a, um, it's a metal to be able to be exhausted doing something you love. You just get, you, get you some tired. of that kid life, bro. Then you'll, you'll, you'll get yeah, to a whole other level of tired that you... Are you coming on to me? No, 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 I'm you not. Having kids You're not your old wife might oh. be later, but... <laughs> uh, look, I like you guys. Um, you. I'd like you we better like than if you just said hi to me at the Grammys, but... Next time. It is what it is. Yeah, it you is. You had a guitar to tune. Just... You had six strings of glory to make sure they were perfectly... <laughs> and they were, baby. And they were. They were in. Uh, yeah, you guys are... You guys have it. You guys have it. There's no, there's no definitive what it is in, in the same of artistry. Like, you guys will do a good podcast if you stick with it because you have it. You have. Thank you. you, you your brothers so you already trust each other. And if one of you screws up, the other one just gets pissed and punches you. And then you're still yeah. brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a different dynamic than if you're just with a partner, yeah, sure. somebody doing a podcast. Yeah. And you're also f funny. And you also come from a place that a lot of people come from that don't have a lot of uh, representation in this space. There's some, mm -hmm. and it's growing. 
but I really think you guys are onto something. Man, really thank cool. you for saying yeah. that. See, and that 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 means more to me than going back and listening to an episode and thinking that I suck. But you should. But, but you I should. need to hear those things from, especially guys like you that are proven. I mean, like you you've done this, you've made it your That's career. Six thousand dollars shoes. <laughs> hey, don't. I ain't even gonna get closer than what I am to them right now. Eighteen hundred. Infinity pool. I'm 1800, just saying. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eighteen hundred. I'm just saying. Right? I, yeah. I, I appreciate you saying that because. <laughs> Coming from a, a guy like in a position that you are, that means that means the world to to guys that are just starting off. Yeah, something. we don't know what we we're doing. We don't know what we're doing. Nobody ever does. Right. It's like songwriting. When someone would songwriter tell you, we don't know what we're doing. We just nobody ever has it figured out. And if they say they do, they're lying. And it took me a long time. It took me to figuring it out to realize nobody actually has figured okay. it out. Okay, I'll trust you on that. Here's what I'm having trouble with. How do you how do you not how do this <laughs> how do you line up a guest to where it doesn't end up being the same like. Prog- program. Um, I think for you, it feels like that because you're doing it every time. Eventually, you're going to realize it does. It's not the same. Oh, it, it probably feels like that. It does feel. I like mean, it's like writing a song and going verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus out, and you're like, well, every freaking song is the same. But to somebody way, so who's not huh. in the middle of right. doing a writing a song or doing a podcast, it doesn't feel exactly the same. Mm. So don't let that get in your head. It's okay. going to be the same way as like. Uh, here's the freaking formula to write a song. Yeah. You know what? Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge. <laughs> and then it should be solo. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. same thing. Okay. So as long as the person that you're talking with, or even if it's just you two guys, as long as you have something to talk about yeah. that you feel it doesn't have to be fresh. It just needs to be timely. Yeah. You're good. Don't don't get yourself in that habit because then you'll be trying to do all kind of crazy stuff. I know. I don't want to get to wacky town. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Ooga. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that was loud too. Yeah, I like you guys. Yeah. Um, Thanks, man. We yeah. like you. Was this like a tryout? Uh, like yeah, you were gonna, was you're actually going to get canceled. If this was an AC, <laughs> 22. Okay, I'll take it. That'll, 22. Give, me, that'll give me to college. Yeah. It's your first time taking it. You're like a ninth, ninth oh, grade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like ninth grade, 22 oh, yeah. is what we call this. We'll come back. Next time, you'll be in 10th grade. You'll go to high school with the big boys. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> your episodes, the four you've had out, who's been on? Josh Thompson, Hardy. Ben Hayslip Dustin and Lynch. Dustin Lynch. And who? give me a couple coming up. Who's next? Casey Beathers are next. Mm-hmm. John the Singleton. Tra- Tranny Anderson. Singleton's coming on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on. We have we Luke Co- on. We got Combs yeah. coming. Uh, uh, Colby Calais, which is super cool. Yeah. Who else? Walker Hayes. Walker Hayes, Hayes is going to do yeah. it. That's cool. Drake White, yeah. Yeah, good for you guys. It's awesome. Great dudes. Keep it great, up. great guys and girls. We love them yeah. all. Not all. Not all of them, but I, most of them. I love all of them. Yeah, I do too. So yeah, far. Because they did your show. Correct. Yeah, I felt I felt that too. It's also just really just a ploy to get songs cut. Like this, is an entire it's a just scam. Okay, look, right? I agree completely. Listen to this. I this last thing I'm gonna say because I'm way over. I have a pre- sorry, sorry. meeting. I'm seven minutes late for. Sorry, but sorry, I, sorry, sorry. No, I I'm happy to be late for that to finish this because I feel like this is this this kind of moment is precious to me because I really enjoy what you guys are doing. I enjoy hanging out with you guys. Thank you. Um, when you say what were you just saying? He said it's all scam. Oh yeah, oh no, yeah, the scam. This this podcast has created so many positive relationships for me in my life because how, whenever would, cause you're not going to say hi to me at a freaking hotel or the Grammys. Nope. Right. Whenever. Now, if I were to see you at the store now, yeah, I'm hugging you for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I because, know you got that germ thing, but I'm still going to hug no, you. No, it's okay. Okay. Uh, it looks like you have so many germs that we cancel each other out. Then it would I'd be, we'd be good. You're a germaphobe. Uh, j- look at him. So <laughs> he's gross. Yeah. My point is, it's, just, it's a Danophobe. This is an, <laughs> it, this is an intimate thing. Yeah, it for is. sure. And, there's a bit of trust, just like you're writing a song with somebody. They're going to have your back if you don't have it. And after you complete this, you leave the room going, dang, I, I, like, I feel pretty close to that person. I've seen people out that I haven't seen forever, but I did a podcast with them. And it's just like, what? It, you're going to make so many great relationships or forge the ones that you have even stronger that it's going to feel like a scam. Yeah, it feels yeah. scammy. Yeah. But as scammy, long as people... Imposter, little scammy imposter, Kershaw. Imposter baby. syndrome. Scammy whole, Kershaw. Whole, oh, yeah, it, you're just going to... If cops walked in right now, I'd be like, you got me. Yeah. I'm the I'm the biggest imposter of them all. Same. Same. No, I'm yeah. right. Yeah. I got We're faking everybody. Yeah. Fake a team, make it. But you know who the coolest people in the world are? Some Writers. Writers. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, agree I, know. I appreciate you guys. You guys go uh, as we mentioned earlier, the God's Country podcast. Go follow it, but go uh, check it out. These guys are funny. They're great. If you didn't already have a deal like a podcast deal, I would sign you to my oh, thank my, you. my podcast network for thank sure. You. Well, you um, can always be bought. Yeah, we're sell out. <laughs> <laughs> Offer us more money. We're good. It's not. It's called. Really just it's, one no, it's called capitalism. Oh, it's not yeah. sellout. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's right. called capitalism. Right. We got kids. We got, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we got to feed them. Uh, yeah, you guys go follow at the God's Country Podcast. Appreciate you guys coming by. Thank Appreciate you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Great.